Welcome to Solo in an Hour, Terraforming Mars. This video is for you if you'd like to play Terraforming Mars solo in about an hour. You already know the rules for Terraforming Mars, but you may need a quick reminder. Go ahead and get out the game board, your player board, and your player markers. Also get out your 1, 5, and 10 resource cubes. Place the temperature marker at the bottom of the temperature scale, the oxygen marker at the leftmost of the oxygen scale, your nine um, water tokens up at the top, and place one player marker at the solo uh, indicator on generation 14. In the hour long variant, whenever you bump up temperature or increase your oxygen, you'll actually increase it by two. And you'll also increase your terraforming rating by two as well. You'll also start with production of one for each of your resources. So um, put a player cube on each of the one indicators of the production tracks. To compensate for these changes, start your generation marker at generation seven instead of one. You can change where the generation marker starts to change the difficulty of the game. Now shuffle all your cards to create a project deck. Now if you're playing solo in about an hour, you probably don't even need half of these cards. But if you're playing solo, you do include the corporate cards. Now take the top 10 project cards and create your hand. Then choose your corporation. If you're using the beginner corporation, you start with 42 credits and you get all 10 cards for free. Otherwise, deal yourself two corporate cards and choose which one you want to play with. You can use the cards in your hand to decide which corporation to use. Don't forget that if you play with a regular corporation, you have to pay three credits for each card that you keep from the 10 that you drew at the beginning. Discard each card that you don't keep. Now place two neutral cities on Mars. These cities are not owned by you. In the multiplayer game, you can use the player marker to mark tiles that you own. In a solo game, since you own all the tiles except for the neutral ones, you can use a marker such as the resource cube to mark the neutral tiles. To place the first city, draw a card and use its cost to determine its position. Start at the upper left and count left to right, skipping illegal placements. Discard the first card and draw a second one for the second city. Do the same thing, but go from right to left, starting at the bottom right, and skipping illegal placements. Use the same basic approach for placing two greeneries. Greeneries do not increase your oxygen level. When placing the greeneries, start in the upper left if possible, but skip illegal placements and count clockwise around the city. If you use Thoris Republic, you do get production increases for both of the neutral cities. The milestones and awards are not used in the solo game. Now you're ready to play the game. Don't forget that there are cards numbered 1 to 4 that can give you reminders on how to play, how to play styles, and the in-game scoring. Remember, for the first round, you skip the research phase. We'll start with the action phase, look through your hand, and pick which card you'd like to play. Here's some things to remember when choosing and playing your cards. Event cards are orange and have a one-time effect. Turn them face down after you've played them. Automated cards have a one-time effect. They're green, but they're placed faced up so that you can use the tag in the rest of the game. Action cards are blue and have an action that you can trigger once a round. It's a good idea to place your player marker on that card once you've triggered the action. Then you can remove it at the end of the round. Don't forget that you have to pay the card's cost in order to play it. An icon has a red border. It means it targets any player. When you play the solo variant, there's an imaginary player that you can take resources from. Icons with a brown border refer to production. Once you've completed all your actions, now you go to the production phase. That's described on page 8 of the rulebook. First, move all energy to heat, then add new resources based on the production value. Now gain mega credits according to your terraforming rating. If your mega credit production was negative, subtract it from the mega credits that you earned through your terraforming rating. Remove player markers from any action cards. Finally, boost up your generation to the next level. Now you're ready for the research phase. Draw the top four cards off the project deck and pay three credits for each one that you want to keep. And now you're back to the action phase. Here are the special rules when you place your tiles. Oceans need to be placed on areas reserved for oceans. Cities cannot be placed next to other cities. Greenery tiles need to be placed next to a tile that you own if possible. No one owns oceans. Card number two gives you the rules for placing tiles. Page number 12 and card number 4 describe final scoring. For final scoring, start with the terraforming rating as your base score. 
Then you get one point for each greenery tile that you own. Cities are worth one victory point for every greenery around the city, including ones that you don't own. Finally, take all the cards that you've played and add up the victory points, both positive and negative. Have fun playing Terraforming Mars.